Your hometown news. News Center 25, weekend edition at 5. Exactly 100 years ago today, on November 11th, 1918, World War I came to an end. Thank God. It was a brutal war. Millions of American, French, and Allied troops had fought with extraordinary skill and valor in one of the bloodiest conflicts in human history. We are gathered together at this hallowed resting place to pay tribute to the brave Americans who gave their last breath in that mighty struggle. Good evening and thank you for joining us for News Center 25 at 5. I'm Abby Rocha. Today, Veterans Day is being honored around the world. President Trump visited the Serene American Cemetery outside of Paris and gave a statement on the 100th anniversary of the World War I armistice. The president paid tribute to American, French and other allied troops who lost their lives during what was called the Great War. More than 1,500 Americans who died during the war are buried at the cemetery. To all of the French military leaders and dignitaries in attendance with us now, thank you for joining us as we honor the American and French service members who shed their blood together in a horrible, horrible war, but a war known as the Great War. Trump was in Paris this weekend to attend commemorations marking a century since the end of the conflict. Tonight in Tennessee, authorities are searching for the person responsible for a shooting that killed two people. Investigators say a total of six people were injured. One person was pronounced dead at the scene. Another died later at the hospital. The remaining victims range from being seriously to critically injured. As of now, police are not sure what caused the shooting. However, the ages of victims range from 13 to 21 years old. Anyone with any information is asked to contact the Shelby County Sheriff's Office. Across the nation in Seattle, a raging fire destroyed a lumber warehouse. Take a look. This video is captured by the Seattle Fire Department as crews work to extinguish the inferno. Flames could be seen shooting as high as 75 feet into the air. A total of five buildings were impacted by the fire, with one of them collapsing from its damages. Crews say the fire was so strong, some residents had to leave their homes due to power loss from the fire. Across the nation, a raging fire burning out of control in Southern California continues to threaten homes and force evacuations. Officials say the Woolsey fire, which began Thursday, has burned at least 83,000 acres. Wind gusts are expected to reach up to 70 miles per hour today in Santa Ana, which could cause the fire to spread even more rapidly. The entire city of Malibu remains under evacuation, as well as parts of Los Angeles and Ventura counties. Officials say the fire has destroyed at least 117 structures. Right now, they say the fire is 10% contained. Snow smoke from the nearby fires made its way into a California sports arena. Fans and players at the LA Lakers and Sacramento Kings game experienced some hazy air from the Butte fire near Sacramento. Before the game, ticket holders were asked to keep the doors to the arena closed as much as possible. Many of the Lakers players say they could see flames on the ground during their flight to Sacramento, as well as some smoke during Saturday morning's shoot around. Now in Mexico, migrants scrambled to get on the back of a trailer Sunday en route to the United States to seek asylum north of the border. The migrants are leaving just days after President Trump signed a proclamation suspending the entry of migrants through the U.S. southern border between ports of entry for 90 days. The proclamation will bar migrants who cross the U.S. border with Mexico illegally from receiving asylum in the United States. And now it's time to talk weather on this Sunday night. Taking a first look at your forecast, let's check in with meteorologist Trey Mining to see what the rest of your week will look like. Trey? Oh, yes. On the outside, temperature is pretty much in the 50s around the Crossroads area. No, it's not 72 degrees out of Matagorda Bay, but it's a good view, though. Look at the cloudy skies along the Intercoastal Canal. Mighty chilly out there. What about the temperatures continuing to plummet? Starting tomorrow because of another cold front headed our way. Any rain associated with that? We'll take a look at that a little bit later on in the full hometown forecast. Make it a great day today and bundle up everybody. Abby. Thank you, Trey. Back here in the crossroads for the third straight year, community members offer a special service for all veterans. This year, they took it down to Port Lavaca and New Center 25's David Gibson went to Calhoun County and tells us all about it. 
across our country. For Luis Felix, Veterans Day means a lot to him because his dad served this country. I did appreciate my dad very much, and he told just some of it, a story of his uh, life in the military in World War II. He was a bombardier on a B-17 in World War II and served 33 missions over Germany. Svetlik decided to follow in his dad's footsteps through his love for aviation. Took us to many places where a lot of the World War II aircraft were on display, and that led me to uh, have an aviation career and as a mechanic and a pilot. He thought, what better way to give back to veterans than giving them a free experience above the clouds? Veterans Day is not only for veterans, but also the sacrifices made by their families. Enjoyable experience, per perhaps that they've never flown in a small airplane. Uh, we try to give them a quality experience and, and in this case show them the, the Bay Area and the, the sites around uh, Calhoun County. Up, up and away, many veterans got the chance to soar and for some, once again. I got the chance to hop on a plane with veteran Don Hanselman and I asked him about the importance of honoring veterans on this day. Uh, it's a wonderful thing for us to come out and enjoy these uh, pilots and their aircraft to uh, fly around and see this beautiful country and enjoy the freedom we have today and hopefully in the future. Every veteran has their own unique story of sacrifice for our freedom. It's great to have our freedom and to see the American flag fly every day. Svetlik adds he is honored to be able to help veterans feel special on this day. More of a takeaway for us that and the enjoyment of seeing the smiles on their faces and the, and the enjoyment that they get uh, and, and and gratitude for the service to our country. Happy Veterans Day to all who served, especially my father. Thank you for your service. In Port Lavaca, I'm David Gibson for your hometown news. Now taking you to Paris, world leaders gather today for the ceremony making 100 years since the end of World War I. Over 60 heads of state and government gathered silent, somber and reflective for a ceremony at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, the mute and powerful symbol of sacrifice of the millions who died from 1914 to 18. The Paris weather gray and damp seemingly aptly fitting when remembering a war fought in mud and relentless horror. They honored that exact moment 100 years earlier. The eerie silence of peace replaced the thunder of guns on western France. Stay with us coming up on New Center 25 at 5. When we come back, it's been a terrible week for many Thousand Oaks residents. First, there was a mass shooting at a country music bar and then raging wildfires. More on that story coming up. Take a look on the outside temperatures in the 50s to near 60 area wide, cloudy skies. A little bit of rainfall out there. How long will the rain last? What about the cold front tomorrow? That will give our temperatures down to near freezing next week. We'll talk about it in your forecast.